Now as you watch in this split screen as I hammer in my spur drive with this particular mallet, which might be better suited to woodworking than wood turning, but anyway, this is one of my very early wood turning projects. This might be 25 years old. Anyway, I'm going to turn another one out of this nice piece of apple. An apple is really hard and it's well suited to make a mallet. So stay tuned and I'll refocus and we'll forge ahead with this project. Okay, I have my piece of apple chucked up between centers. I've got a spur drive and a live center. And I'm going to take my spindle roughing gouge and make this blank round. That's going to be the first step. Make sure I clear my tool rest. And yes, I'm wearing my protection here. Now I'm going to adjust my tool rest, move in just a little bit closer. I've got some splits in this blank. I've got a, a branch coming out of there, a knot. And that's okay. It's going to be a working mallet. I'm going to use this mallet in my shop. It's not going to be maybe very pretty. So let me continue. I'll take this down to round. Now a good part of this blank is going to be taken down where the handle is, but just for practice I'm going to take a large skew chisel and just uh, really make that surface nice and clean and flat and then I'll lay this blank out for my mallet. And I've been turning around uh, 1200 RPM. Now whenever I do any video, I do a lot of work off camera. So I'm going to try to show you the highlights of turning this mallet. Here I'm using a skew chisel. And I like to experiment with different approaches and different cuts. Later on I find out that I've got a knot which presents a problem whenever I use that skew chisel. So I'm going to hold the commentary in this video to a minimum and just let you enjoy the tool work and making this mallet. Now I was doing a bit of turning off camera and I got a little catch. And I always like to investigate and see why did I get a catch. Well. I uh, pointed out this knot, this branch in this apple blank, and I'm using a spindle tool, I'm using a skew chisel, and it's okay on this part of my blank, and it's okay on this part of my blank where the grain is running pretty much parallel to my bedways. You have to consider that this knot is coming straight out of the the piece of wood like my pencil here and that is end grain and you don't want to use a spindle roughing gouge or a skew chisel on end grain and I got a catch 
So I need to use a different tool for this part of my mallet blank. The next thing I'm going to do is lay this out and I'm going to find where my handle is and where the head of the mallet is going to be. Okay now as I lay out my blank for my mallet I need to make a couple decisions. Am I going to put this into a chuck? Do I need to put it into a chuck? Where is my handle going to be? And I think I've decided that this area right here which I'm guessing is a little softer I'm going to make that the handle. Now the other decision is how big do I make that handle? Well I'm going to I'm going to make it uh, the size of my hand. So I would say from the end, right in here, I would mark that off right in there someplace. Let's uh, something like that. And I think that's a pretty good proportion. So I'll have this for the head of the mallet and this for my hand, and I can always change that a little bit as I go along. I'm not sure about having this in a chuck. I can decide that later on. So let me do a little bit of turning on this. I'll get this taken down a little ways. You see my mallet taking shape and what I'm doing is I'm reducing the diameter in this area right here. I like a little bit of a taper whenever I turn a mallet. You know, mostly what I'm doing here is I'm using a peeling cut. It's a cut and it's pretty safe, but I don't get a great finish on that. And there I'm finishing up the end of the mallet. But like I said, this is going to be a working mallet, and at this point, I've already got this mallet completed, and it works just fine in my shop. Now I'm going to take my smaller skew chisel, and I'm going to just clean off this and give this a final cut. And I'll finish that up later, probably off the lathe. I think what I'm going to do is just keep this between centers and not put it in a chuck. Now I simply flip my mallet end for end and I'm working on the handle. 
This allows me to do a little bit better job filming this. I just have better access. And you can see what I'm doing a lot better. I'm just taking a spindle roughing gouge and reducing some of the diameter. There I'm working on the end with a spindle gouge. And as I get down a little closer to the final shape, I will use more of a spindle gouge to get a better finish on that. There's a little bit of detail on the transition from the handle to the head of the mallet. Now as I work on that transition from the handle to the head of the mallet, I'm pretty sure I'm using a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And here is a detail gouge cleaning up the very end of that. And as I go on, I need to reduce the diameter of this. And later on, I'll simply saw off this end and also the end um, where the spur drive is. Now I got my dust collection hooked up here. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and I've got my camera backed off quite a ways so I wouldn't get it all dusty. A little bit of sanding. Well, sanding is always fun when somebody else is doing it. And really it's not too tough of a job on this mallet. It's pretty easy. And you can see the stream of sawdust going into my dust collector hood there. Right there is a good shot, and I'll tell you what, you don't want that in your lungs. Now I intend to use this mallet in my shop, so I didn't sand to too fine a grit here. I'm going to put a little bit of an oil finish on this, and maybe just a little bit of wax, and I'll part off the ends. Now I like to do as much finishing and sanding on the lathe as I can because it is simply a lot easier. This is some tongue oil I'm applying and off camera I'll apply one or two more coats, a little bit of wax, and I will use this mallet. And as I mentioned before, it's actually done at this time and I, I used it to smash in the spur drive just yesterday. So. All right, I'm probably down to an eighth of an inch. I'll just saw that off. And I'll do the same thing with the other end. Well, this has been a fun project, a very simple turning project I think anybody can do. It's a spindle turning, and I'm just sawing off each end with my saw there. Now I've got a little bit of wood there to take off on the very end and later on I just simply take that over to my sanding center and sand that smooth and put a little bit of finish on the very end of that and the job will be done. Yeah, that's very pretty wood. I like apple and I really appreciate you watching the video as always. It helps me if you hit the like button and subscribe and 
and share. Put it on your Facebook timeline. Now this little mallet is a, a bit smaller than most of the mallets I have in my shop, and I think it'll it'll be nice for some operations. So thank you again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you next time.